Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's get right into it. The new EP, uh, Nocturnal Transmission, just came out. So, uh, like, what are your own thoughts and feelings on the EP now that it's out? Um, well, it's kind of a relief uh, for it to be out, finally, um, because we recorded this EP all the way back in December of 2019, and then everything kind of started getting a little crazy with COVID-19 in the world. And uh, so uh, we sat on it for a little bit because we weren't really sure what was gonna go on. Uh, and uh, so then uh, uh, probably around April or May, I just decided, you know, what, I'm just gonna release this and see what happens. And uh, so I called up my friend Steve from War Crime and I was like, hey, you wanna do uh, another record? And he was like, yeah, sure. Uh, and then uh, and then we started working away on that. So uh, it was a great way to spend a lot of the lockdown, which was nice getting all prepped for this. And it, it has actually helped to um, to uh, kind of keep everything in focus because I don't, I mean, other than work, I don't really have a whole lot else to do <laughs> um, because, you know, uh, there's no shows to play. Uh, leaving the house is kind of a sometimes thing now. Um, so it's, uh, it's really, it's been a great experience so far, very different. And it's kind of nice because I feel like, um, I've been able to spend a lot more time on getting this album prepped and ready to go. Okay. So uh, the album was, uh, uh, recorded already last year, right? Okay. So, uh, yeah, you already touched on this, but, uh, what kind of experience has it been to put music out at this kind of time? And, uh, how did the decision come by to finally put it out there? So we, it's strange because we're so used to playing shows um, in order to, you know, prep for a release and to, you know, leading up to the release and after the release. So, um, and the live portion of the band is such an important part of the band, right? Um, so the fact that that whole thing has been removed um, has been, super weird because <laughs> I've never done it like this before and I've released a lot of records um so it's just been it's com been completely different I feel like we've really uh spent a lot of time on doing other things to promote the record like um filming little clips and uh shooting videos um which we had just shot a, a second video for uh one of the songs on nocturnal transmission a couple weeks ago um which we should be getting uh anytime in soon hopefully very soon anyway um so that should be released soon um and like uh just uh spending a lot of time on interviews and stuff like that as well so yeah it's been uh it's been a definitely a very different experience but I think the the thing I just got so antsy and I was just like oh my god I can't I don't even I just need to release this I think for me that was the big thing I was just ready to I was like no more I can't sit on this record anymore uh, so it was uh, it was about time and I, I was just like hey you guys want to do this and Kira and Shane were like yep yeah, yeah, might as well I mean we might be waiting, otherwise we might be waiting, you know, a, another year and we didn't really want to do that. And we wanted to make sure that the the fans, you know, got that record, especially, and it's really important to release music during a time like this because it helps people, right? So that's really important as well. Um, and uh, hopefully the record means a lot to a lot of different people. Yeah, uh, talking about the record, uh, it has been described as uh, love songs and well, metal is absolutely music of love, but uh, how was the creative process for you mixing a theme such as love with uh, heavier music? Well, I mean, uh, the, the the subject matter is never really, um, it's, it's th that's always kind of uh, the, the underlying theme, especially with the White Swan, um, but uh, you're being a freak right now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just, you know, I always like to have a little bit of, uh, a contrast, if you will. Like, so of course the music is really super heavy. Um, but 
if you were to listen to that song and not know what the lyrics were, you'd be like, oh, this sounds like a really super sad song or like super angry. But, you know, because of that little bit of contrast and, you know, the subject matter being so different from what you, you know, are hearing orally, um, it's just, it's just so different, right? Like, um, so I always like, kind of like to trick people <laughs> in that way. And, uh, it, it's definitely another layer of just kind of how I like to, um, you know, make people feel weird when I, they listen to the white swan. <laughs> okay. And, uh, well, they say that the album format is dying, but the white swan has actually released only EP since the debut, uh, Anubis from 2016. So what was originally the reason that you started to release EPs only? Well, I, I just kind of feel like um, releasing EPs is uh, it's a quick way to get things out there. Um, so, you know, instead of us, you know, working away at, uh, you know, 12 songs, which, by the way, for us would be like four vinyls, <laughs> you'd have to do like you'd have to put like four vinyl in. <laughs> And it would be insanely expensive. So there's that because we do really like to release a lot of our um, stuff on vinyl. Uh, but um, besides that, I, I just kind of, it's a way for us to release things quicker, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, more consistently. Because, you know, writing a 12 song, you know, LP is, that's, that's, that's a big undertaking and you know what we might as well just keep the fans happy release something once a year or twice a year or once every 18 months and then uh you know keep everybody engaged and um keep them talking about the white swan which is also kind of helpful uh so it just helps us to release things more frequently i guess so that's kind of the idea behind it. But again, you know, we do have enough material right now for a full length, but I kind of like the EP format, to, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. So you were never kind of so married to the idea of music has to be put out in album format. No, no, definitely not. And you know what i i feel like yeah you're probably right where that kind of is more so with pop music but that kind of format is kind of dying out because people are really into instant gratification these days so you know they want that one song or those couple songs but you know what they're not gonna sit there and have the album experience like you know I did when I was a kid, you bought a CD, you like page through the booklet, yeah, everything was tangible. Things aren't like that anymore. Um, uh, they are for some people and that's why we make vinyl for those collectors. Um, but uh, you know, they're only small batch. So, you know, we make, we make a format for everyone. People that like tangible stuff and people that don't. So there's that. Okay. Uh, well, you, uh, I'm not sure if you have ever, you know, given much thought about what genre of music uh, your music is, but I'm always fascinated with them. So, uh, to you, like, what kind of role sludge plays in plays in your music? And well, what is sludge music to you? I don't. You know what? I don't know. Uh, I just. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I just. You know. I know that I'm not writing music to like fit in a certain, uh, you know, square peg. Uh, I just, I, I, I don't really care uh, all that much. I just write music that I really, you know, I'm like, oh, that sounds good. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, I feel like that's kind of the way I've always been uh, with writing music and stuff like that. So, uh, I think, you know what, we could probably fit into a couple different of those genres, um, but I'm okay with not fitting completely in. I would prefer to be the odd man out. And I don't, I don't necessarily feel like we're like, we completely feel uh, fit in with doom or sludge or any of those kind of, I feel like, um, 
it's it's definitely not we're not a hundred percent there and I, I kind of like that yeah yeah so when reading about the white swan it wasn't you who ticked the boxes we are doom we are sluts <laughs> yeah well you know especially with like a newer band people want to um be able to place your music into a certain category um so you know they all have something to compare it to and uh so that means that that Johnny over here that like sleep might like the white swan but I I just I definitely think that there's there's more to it than that if that makes sense and a lot of times when people um really start to categorize things finitely um it kind of it was just kind of like what Meh. like really like who fucking cares yeah yeah uh, well like, luckily metal bands can all you know come up with their own genre but uh <laughs> like a fuzzy underpants metal or whatever the yeah. fuck. <laughs> like i just <laughs> i'm sorry i just i i, I don't really see like a, a reason uh a reason to to like you know go really super in depth into like a description uh like that and like categorizing things because like i feel like that's just like putting you in a box right and as a musician you want to be outside of the box if that makes sense as much as possible maybe some musicians want to be in a box and that's completely fine but i definitely don't want to be in that box where whatever that box is yeah yeah uh we've been actually talking uh with various bands like big and small and had very different answers. So in your mind on, or from your point of view, uh, how will the, this Corona time affect music industry? You know, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Uh, I think the short term, we're seeing the effects already, um, especially here uh, in Canada, um, there's been live venues that have closed. Uh, right off the bat, like a bunch of them closed, like, um, and you know, they were probably hanging on by a thread. Um, so a couple of those, those, uh, you know, venues that, you know, the White Swan would play in, you know, Hamilton, Toronto, uh, London area, um, those, those, you know, a lot of them didn't make it even through the first couple months, um, which is sad because a lot of those smaller venues. Um, that, you know, house bands like us that are, you know, up and coming and, you know, uh, really help the local scene, um, those, those type of venues aren't going to exist, uh, in a lot of places. So that's kind of sad. Um, and for a musician that is really super into playing live, like I don't play music for any other reason other than to play live and to like create that's like creating is like secondary to man like i like playing live i do love creating and i love writing music but i feel like playing live is kind of above that if that makes sense um so i think that's really gonna affect this that's the short term and i think the long term is, is i think this might be positive uh it might create some crazy innovative way of creating music and playing live like we've seen uh, all of those live streams that bands have been doing like that's craziness that didn't really exist people didn't really do that very often before this happened and now everybody's doing it and that's amazing so you know some guy that lives in you know who knows Alaska or something like that um, can go see, uh, turn on his computer and go see Clutch or, you know what I mean? Cause I know they were doing a bunch of really cool live streams for a while. Um, so it's just one of those things that's, it's going to change the way that we kind of do all of this, I think. And uh, I think it'll probably push things a lot more digitally, but I feel like when live music finally is able to come back, it's going to explode because people are so fucking bored in their houses right now. <laughs> so I don't blame them. 
Uh, I'm bored too. And as soon as I'm able to play a show, I will. And I expect everybody to be there. Yeah, so what are your expectations for the first gig after all this finally ends? So what it's, you know, can you imagine what it will be? I'm sure it'll be insane. I can't wait. Like, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but I mean, who knows when this is gonna, you know, be over. And and it's like, it's weird because people keep talking about, oh, when this is over, when this is over. Like, what if it's never over? <laughs> I I legitimately feel like I think about stuff like that. Like, what if I'm never able to play music again live? And this is just going to be how it is. And I'm locked in my house with my cats. Like, <laughs> what if that's a thing? Uh, clearly, you know, it's that's probably not going to be the case. But it's still, like, very concerning, right? So uh, I feel like when that happens it's going to be a huge party yeah uh, well yeah everything in the future is pretty uncertain but what is like the very next thing for the white swan um well uh right now i think uh i have uh probably in the bag like a couple songs already so it, it would just be a case of kind of getting those all situated and ready to go hopefully record by january again um so we can have another ep out soonish um that's like a little farther in the future um but uh we just uh, uh filmed a video for our, another song on nocturnal transmission so we're going to release that hopefully in the next couple weeks and i'm just trying to think what else um just lots of interviews and um promotion stuff for for the record because we want to make sure that you know we're doing as much as possible especially because we don't have live shows to really promote it so uh lots of talking to people like you which is the highlight of my day <laughs>